Welcome to the sixth episode of Kicking It With Coach. I'm here with my special guest, Taylor McClinton. Um, Taylor, I coached Taylor at Mountain Island Charter in track and field for three years. Um, Taylor also was a standout volleyball player. Big shout out to Coach Lieber and um, Coach Christie. Taylor, you're a student athlete now at Erskine's College playing volleyball. How have you been? I'm doing good. I'm just trying to stay busy around the house so I'm not bored because that can take a toll on you mentally. So, I mean, my family's all here. My brother, I haven't really seen him that much. So he's here. He's stuck here. I'm kind of happy he didn't go back to the um, to the Army up in New York because, um, I mean, we don't really get this time to spend with each other. So we've been working out. We've been getting artsy painting and stuff like that. So it's been really fun despite the circumstances. For sure. How's your academics? And can you tell me a little bit about your GPA? Because you're, you're yeah. a current sophomore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm about to be a rising junior. And I mean, I started off freshman year. My GPA was pretty good. It was around, I kept a three, somewhere around a three. Um, I personally can't let my GPA drop. That's not the type of person I am. So I've been working hard to maintain my GPA. And uh, last semester, I ended up making the Dean's List. And this semester, I'm trying to get a 4.0. Uh, I'm taking 18 credit hours outside of season. I always do that. And then when I'm in season, I'll only take 15 credit hours because that's too much to really take care of. Um, but with the academics so far, it is challenging, but I mean, you have to put in the work if you want to see the results. And I want to see a 4 so I'm putting in the work. For sure, because I know in high school, you was one of those rare students or a student at, at the school that did a great job of balancing academics and athletics at a high level yes. and, and keeping it top notch. You mm -hmm. actually was one of our Raptor legends. You got your, your volleyball number retired. Yeah. <laughs> So that, that was pretty impressive. But you did a great job of balancing both. So is there any advice that you can give any student athletes out there that's trying to make that transition to college? Um, yeah, so regarding academics, I'd say when you start off and you're in high school, you might want to go ahead and make it a habit of getting your work done early and not procrastinating and stuff like that that so you have to see natural translation and so I didn't have to struggle that much and that's how I was able to keep my GPA and keep my grades and work ethic the same. Um, regarding sports, you have to put in the same work ethic. Work harder when you're in high school so that way when you get to college you already have like your spot in your work ethic. For sure, that's some great advice um, Taylor. And for like rising ninth graders, eighth graders now that's coming up to high school, a lot of eighth graders coming into their ninth grade year don't really understand the importance of keeping your GPA up or, you know, making sure that ninth grade year you set that foundation. Any advice for them? Yes. So when you're in ninth grade, I mean, some people might not think it's, oh, it's ninth grade. My grades don't really matter. No, that's when it matters. That's when you need to start your habit of your work ethic. I can't stress that enough. So. In order to, like, when you transition 9th to 10th to 11th to your senior year, you already have your foundation. They start looking, colleges start looking at your grades when you are in ninth grade. So you don't want to slack off and stuff like that. And you need to have the right mentality. And you don't want to be around people who make you procrastinate or be around people who say, oh, bad grades, that's, that's all right, that's all right. Right. No, you don't want to strive for a C. You don't want to be average. You want to be better than average. You want to be the one shooting for the A. How did your high school experience help shape your college experience? My high school experience helped shape my college experience by making me more of a responsible person. I learned that in high school, yeah, I have academics and I also have my sport that I'm playing, but when you get into college, you have your academics, you also have your sport, and then you have whether you want a job 
or like your like social life actually matters now so it just made me more of a responsible person I was able to take on more because of high school what's um some lessons that you learned in sports that helped shape you as a person and, and a student a, a student athlete A lesson that I learned in sports, I'd say the drive. Like, when you have your teammates, you want to have teammates who are going to push you. So I'd say you want to be, if you don't have teammates that are going to push you, you want to be the one that can push others, if that makes any sense. So it all goes back to your work ethic. So you want to grow up and, like, give it your best. And so I'd say the biggest lesson that I learned, she lives, I've been doing this for a while. It's come so natural now. Um, not stop, just don't stop. Like you don't want, have that mentality of not wanting to stop. You want to get stronger, you want to strive better, you want to be faster in the court. For sure. Um, and I know you, you was a you did a lot of things first in, in school history. You did you was the first female volleyball player to sign, mm -hmm. and you set that standard for so many. And you also got a up. You got another rising superstar, your sister. Um, you want to talk anything about? I mean, and your brother Jalen is at Army. He played football. Was a, a football star. You want to talk to anything about how important family is and? coming from an athletic family and some of the things that your parents push y'all to do? Yeah, so my mom, she played softball and she had the chance to go to Federal State to play softball, but she stopped. Um, my dad played basketball. My brother plays football and basketball, well, football now, and he just, he's about to graduate. He's a senior. Um, my sister's coming up. She's about to be a junior. And she plays volleyball as well. She also played soccer. I mean, we are all athletic. And so with your family being athletic, with mine being athletic, I mean, competition is in everything. So, so if you don't want to lose, you got to be the best at something. I mean, there is, we are really competitive. Like, we'll go outside, like, almost every Thursday. We'll set the cone out, we'll get the ladders. Um, we'll have races up the steps. I mean, everything is a race. Everything's a competition. Um, and that kind of shaped me as a person. I mean, it shaped my mentality. We're, we are, we're all strong uh, individuals in here. And so, like, we don't really let anything get on us. And if we do, like, if I do have a bad practice when I'm in school right now, if I do have a bad practice, I'll be like, okay, well, my brother's up in Army. He's waking up at 5 p.m. He's got all this lifting. He doesn't have a break. I mean, what are you complaining for? It's a two-hour practice. Like, come on now. And then that'll drive me and push me. So we're all self-motivated people. Yeah. What's some lasting advice that you can give to any student athletes out there? Just anything. And I also want you to highlight some things that you've been doing while you were in college if it's clubs or anything like that, what's some things that, you, that you're that you doing in college outside of athletics? So in college, I'm trying to step out of my like comfort zone. So I just got a work study. Um, I'm not really doing any clubs. I'm not, I'm not really interested in clubs, stuff like that. But I mean, I'll go work out on my own time. I'm, do my own 5 a.m.s, um, night shifts, working. Um, I'm trying to get out more in my college. It's not really like around a bunch of stores like malls and restaurants and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's no really, there's not that many distractions. So if I do want to do something outside, then me and my friends, we can't take a trip down to Clemson or we can go to the nearest college and stuff like that and hang out with them, go to other sporting events. We're really big on school spirit. So it's not really a club, but we're, um, me and my friend, we're trying to make a club where we can gain more school spirit because we are so small and so local. For sure. And before we get into our fun part, which is me showing some videos and pictures and stuff, What's one thing that I've helped impact 
your your life yeah okay so you always um when i was in high school you always like came up to me or my friend group and you'd be like so what's up like what's on your mind like what are you thinking about and i kind of that kind of stuck with me because it's like you want to know how we feel and let me tell you in college it takes a mental toll on you when you're balancing so many things and you also have sports and you have that one bad coach or those people who like won't stop messing with you or something like that and you try to hide it like some college kids they try to hide it some of them revert to like alcohol some revert to like drugs and stuff like that but there are people who like hold it in them and so it's like so what's up how are you doing so like that one small talk that one um conversation negotiator i mean you can really make a person stay by asking them how they're doing because sometimes they don't think anybody cares, but like, hey, we see you, like, come on, come on, pick yourself up. So that's probably one thing that you, like, taught me. Ask somebody how, how they're doing because that can make a person stay. Yeah, and it's just the little things. And, you know, obviously I got a student, two student athletes that's in college now, and I know my daughter in particular, Asia, she's she always battles the mental side of, of being a student athlete because – that that doesn't really get highlighted enough because guess what y'all got to compete hard athletically and then you're expected to, to to compete hard academically so I know that can have a toll toll on student athletes so it's just the little things and you know just talking to to student athletes going up to them just asking them how their day going and you know we had a you you I coached you in track so track was a demanding sport i mean we had like 10 track meets and you're talking about four or five hour events yeah. in a hot sun sometimes in a cold if we're doing a polar bear in an indoor season so it was demanding but i appreciate that are you ready to get into this fun part yeah all right see what you think okay. all right taylor here we go this is your um 2018 it's your senior year um vi um Varsity volleyball highlights. Wow. Yeah, I don't even play that position anymore. <laughs> Who are we playing? Pine Lake? Yes. If no one knows, our, our girls' volleyball team are beasts. They, they've been one of the most consistent programs in school history the last couple of years. Big shout out to, mm -hmm. to all the girls' volleyball players out there working hard. Yeah. I mean, I try and get out there um, in the sand with them a couple of times during the summer, and I also go through. I also go to their um, their summer workouts. It's nice going back and playing with them and see how much they have grown. For sure, I'm gonna get into this next clip right after this. All right, Taylor. So AAU, right? Which is yeah. is a step above high school. So you did a lot of getting out, marketing yourself, putting yourself in a position where you're playing against people from all around the country. And I know that's that's a big thing for student athletes that's trying to get to the next level. It's marketing yourself. Yeah, like you have to create your brand and know your worth. You have to. I want to say that team is from San Diego. That was probably the best game I've ever played in my entire life. Well, she thought she was going to get you. She was going for the kill, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to, that's in Orlando, Florida. It's like I miss it, but I mean, I don't know. College volleyball is a little bit better than that. But that is fun. And I'll still go there because my sister plays too. 
I mean, you have teams all over the world. Good job. That was a good, that was a good save. I mean, looking back on it, my body has taken a toll. <laughs> all right, Taylor, we just looked at some of your highlights, some of your clips. You want to talk about your high school experience, like just playing volleyball and just being out there with your teammates? Yes. Yeah, so my high school experience playing volleyball, I started off fifth grade, I want to say. Um, I kind of started volleyball late. Volleyball players would consider like 13 years old, 11 years old late. They normally start earlier than that. But to know that I was able to touch volleyball and hearing like my past coaches' experiences and my past teammates' experience and saying how I just naturally can play, um, it made me grow as a person. Um, and regarding volleyball, I mean, I think in high school, I just wanted to get better every practice. I mean, there were some practices where you're just like, I'm drained, leave me alone. But like, it, it's fun playing, especially with my teammates that I did have, like Lexi, Kenda, Jessica. Um, playing with people that you love and you're surrounded by them makes the game so much more better. No doubt. I just remember you guys playing with such a passion. Like I used to like going to the volleyball games. Um, we used to bring our football team to y'all games. Yeah. And we love watching y'all play because y'all play with such a passion. And I used to always tell our guys, I said, hey, that's how you play. That's how you play for the love of the sport. Like you knew when, when we watched y'all play, y'all was emptying the tank and y'all gave it 100%. So we actually try to use that football-wise as an example. And that's why you see me coming to a lot of, a lot of y'all games because I wanted them to see that. All right? You know you love the sport when when after you play a game and you lose and you just sit there and you start crying in front of everybody and you're just like, I just don't know why this even happened. Like, that's how you know you love the game. And so, I mean, after this one game that we played at Lincoln Charter, I just sat there and I bawled my eyes out because that was probably the hardest. Like, I fought hard for that game and we still ended up losing. And I'm just like, and there's parents over here comforting me. I'm just like, no, I could have done more. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're our team. You are going to win. You can't, you can't, you can't win them all. You can't. Absolutely. All right, I'm, we're going to get into these pictures real quick. You ready? Okay. <laughs> Let's go. All right, Taylor. <laughs> Family picture. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a good picture. That's that needs to be framed somewhere. <laughs> and that was. Um, yeah, that was at my brother's uh, prep school. His first time at Army, his first year. I like this picture, Taylor, because I know your family. Before Mountain Isle, I remember your brother, and I remember him playing um, football. And I remember seeing your family, because you actually did AU track. That's a little known fact, right? Yeah, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> You did AAU track, and I remember you threw you threw the shot, and you did some other things. But you come from like you talked about earlier. You come from an athletic family that, you know, sports has helped shape discipline and be able to create opportunities. How, how, I mean, we talked a little bit about the competitiveness, but how does that love bring y'all all together of sports? It's because we have each other's best interests at heart. That's what it is. Um, he's like, like I said, when we go out and do ladder drills, he's pushing us. We're not just gonna sit there and cry because we know he has our best interests at heart. And he's D one. I mean, we're gonna listen to him. He's got it. He's got there. Like we're trying to get what he is. For sure. I'm sure this next clip. All right, track days. Let's talk about uh, it. Cause that's what I coached you on was track and. By the way, people don't realize this, like you was an outstanding track athlete. Like you still got female records to this day in the shot and discus. And you worked yeah. extremely hard. And I remember one of the coaches saying, this one I knew you was really good. Um, I think we was at, I forgot what school we was at, but coach come up to me and said, this is right before conference and says, well, I know the girl Taylor, Taylor's going to take the shot and disc or, I said, oh, for real? And I'm thinking to myself, like, 
okay, I knew you was good, but they already had, had came to the conclusion that you had this thing a lot. You want to talk anything about your track career? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I started when I was really, really young, you know, my brother and my sister, we all started when we were young. Um, Charlotte Heat, and then we went to Carolina Storm. Um, I started throwing the shot put when I started doing track, and that's a long, long time. And I don't know where the muscles came from. I think it's because every time I got in trouble when I was younger, they made me hold phone books, and if I dropped them, bad story. And so I think that's where all the muscle came from. So, I mean... I ended up getting third in the nation for primary girl shot put. Um, I ran the 200, I did the 400. Um, I never did discus until I came to MICS and did it there. I didn't really like the discus, but I mean, I tried it. I was like, might as well. It's not going to hurt nobody. And so that's what I did. And I ended up going from track to like cheerleading and then back to track. So I was playing sports year round and I think cheerleading actually made me stronger too. And so that helped with my track career. And while you you did throw, you was a thrower for me, you I always try to get you to, to do a running event. I think I was successful maybe one or two meets. I I mean I never really liked it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to sit here and complain about it because, I mean, it got me where I am today. I mean, all these sports that I played, it got me to where I am today. For, sh for sure. Next picture. Look at this group right here. <sighs> this is our throws group. Is that – who was in the back? <laughs> I don't know. Who, who is that in the back? I know we're at um, Coolwood because that's where we used to have to practice at. Yeah. And I just remember you guys being a tight unit, like boys and girls, because a lot of people don't realize track is really two with one team is really two different teams within one. Yeah. You guys stayed together no matter if it was the boys throwers, the girls throwers, and y'all were so supportive of each other. And I just remember mm -hmm. the dedication and the love y'all have for each other. And I'm gonna get into this next clip because I think that that kind of defines what I'm talking about. You, as you see, think you about ready to compete or, and everybody's around you. Yeah. I mean, I know they looked up to me and I think it is because of the experience that I had. Cause I remember this one time we didn't have a coach. And so they're like, Taylor, how, like, how do I do this? And I was like, look, I did this just a long time ago, but let me see if I still got it. Do it. Yep. I think I do. So they were like, I mean, and it's not, they learn for me, but I still learn things from them. Like Jay taught me how to do the spin move. I've never did that. I've always seen guys do and always wanted to try it, but he looked it up, he did it. And I was like, teach me that. And I mean, Mo, my best friend, I mean, he helped me too. He mentally, physically in my ear, telling me like, you can throw farther than that. Throw farther than that. Like you gonna let this girl out for you or something like no. And so, I mean, the competitive mindset is friendly, but, I mean, it pushed me, so we are a tight unit. For sure. All right. What's, what's going on with this picture? Like, this looks intense. And if people that, don't know you, you have an intense look. Yes. <laughs> they always say I have a straight face, and everybody thinks I'm mad all the time. <laughs> but, I mean, whatever. I mean, if you know me, you know I'm not mad but that was right after our uh, picture day shoot I think and I've always seen pictures online with ball of players throwing the ball up and doing it. and I was like I want to do that hold my phone let me try got it I was like this is the picture and that picture is going to stay with me forever <laughs> well it's definitely with you and I, I think this is that, that it sums up a lot of things of your career like just being intense and being that captain and that leader not just in, again, not just in volleyball, but amongst so many peers, amongst so many people in the school. You know, that, that's, that was a big thing. Because I remember, like, obviously, you know, I got a younger daughter, Donna. And Donna knows all the female athletes. Like, she knows, she knew who you were. You know, she knew Kenda. 
and Zara now. So she always looks up to you guys. And by, by being a K through 12 school, you're going to get that. So I think this represented a lot, Taylor. Yeah. All right. Get uh, ready. <laughs> that now, you know, people don't realize, like, unless you go through the process that when you sign, you have to fax the, the, the paperwork back in. And I like this picture because it's symbolic because you and Coach Christie, y'all are together, y'all, y'all are faxing your paperwork off. But just the smile and the excitement. I know Coach Christie was excited, first volley, volley volleyball girl in school history to sign. That was a exciting time for just, you know, just not the volleyball program, but for everybody as a whole. And most importantly, you and your family. You want to talk about this picture? Um you gotta make it official <laughs> you gotta make it official so that's basically what we're doing um that was a that was an exciting time in my life um with the support of others and having my previous coach there doing it helped me with it um i mean what, what can i say that was great <laughs> yeah definitely shout out to coach Liebert. Mm -hmm. yes all right you're signing like you said you're making it official What's going through your mind right now? Right there, I think I was like, I can't wait to get this over with. People can get the cameras out my face. We can go eat cake. I mean, <laughs> and then I can move on with my life. <laughs> yeah, I think at that point, I don't know. I was just ready to go. I mean, I'm not really the one for attention. I don't really like the attention. And everybody was just sitting there with their phones in my face. And I was signing it, and I was like, had a serious face on. They're like, it's okay to smile. I'm just like, yep, most definitely. That was your moment. That was definitely your moment. I couldn't believe it was happening. Oh. So you and your best friend, and you got Mason over there smiling. Yeah. This was a huge time. And I think this is actually when we signed it officially, not the ceremony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I still see, I still see Mo. Um, every now and then I'll see Mason. Yeah, he but. comes, he comes back every now and again. And you know, he got family in Georgia, but he always try to come back to the school and do yeah. things. Yeah. All right. What was <laughs> about Raptor Legends? Like yeah. you, number twelve will never be worn again unless you decide. It's going to be worn. Your jersey is retired, number 12. Mm -hmm. And very rarely do student athletes get an opportunity to get their jersey retired, let alone while you're actually in high school. How was that feeling? Um, at that moment, it was a great feeling to know that you made an impact so, so importantly that nobody's going to touch your jersey anymore. And I didn't even though that was a thing that you could get your jersey retired in high school. <laughs> but I'm glad I can make an impact. And people Definitely. Can that. And this is, a, this is a good group right here with Kyle and, and Spivey. And I, I, I interviewed Spivey, interviewed Kendall. I got to get around and interview with Kyle. Oh, um, right. Definitely got to reach out to him. Yeah, I know Kyle will have a story to tell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already prepared for that. That's my guy, man. <laughs> I got so much we could talk about. Yeah. All right, this is your family. This is your volleyball family. Everyone's around you supporting you. Yeah. How did that feel to have the support of your teammates? That was good. Um, I'm glad I could like show and let them know that NYCS can get a volleyball scholarship. Like you can go to volleyball. I mean, go to college and play volleyball. So I mean, I mean, my sister's looking at schools. Anaya, Anna. Lauren, yes, I just, I mean, there's no words to describe that moment right there. Yeah, that's a great picture. I think it summarized what you all was about as a team, and like we talked about earlier, that passion. Yes. Yeah. All right, you you enrolled at Erskine's, and it's picture that. What's yeah. this look? What's this look? Um. I don't even know. Look, we had a practice before that, and so we had to leave 
and go shower and get ready and come back in like 20 minutes tops. And as a, for a girl, that's a little difficult. I'm gonna need, you know, at least an hour to get ready, but that was rushed. And so, but I mean, our pictures came out good. Every single last one of us on that team had some really good pictures. And we also took some personality pictures. Um, I don't know if you're able to find that, but I had like, I'm really quiet as a person and I'm very to myself. And so my personality picture is the volleyball right here and me doing this. Like, shh. Yeah. And so um, talk about the uh, personality picture. Yeah. Talk about your personality picture. Yeah. So the personality picture is basically a picture that you think will describe yourself. And ever since I was small playing volleyball and track, I've never really like opened up as a person. I never really talked. Even in school, I was like really quiet. Um, and now I'm still quiet. I'm trying to work on getting out of my comfort zone and stuff like that. Um, and so I felt like that was my personality since I'm always a quiet person. Might as well. For sure. All right, little action. Oh, college volleyball. <laughs> It's a lot different from high school volleyball. It's a lot faster pace. This is under this picture is actually under your profile, um, under your Erskine volleyball player profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Here's a little collage I found, um, kind of summarizing everything. Oof. Oh, let's see. Okay, so the top right picture with me in the locker that is that was the first time we got to we did a locker reveal and so that's when after move-in day uh, at the end of the night we'll go to the locker open it up and that's basically christmas you got your gear you got your uh your outfits your book bag you see your locker design everything set up um that's that picture. I can, don't even know what the middle picture is. <laughs> um, the picture to the left, the top left, that's when we did team bonding. Uh, underneath that was my first day of freshman year. Going to school, that was my outfit. We all had to take outfit pictures. Um, some more action, action shots. Uh, the two pictures in the middle, with the black one, that was that flagler. First time traveling to Florida with my volleyball team in college. Pretty fun experience. I loved it. For sure. Yeah, Taylor, we, we just got finished with the your pictures. How does it feel to be a college athlete? Can you believe you're you are a college student athlete? I wanna say that, you know, time flies because two more years and I'm out of here and there will be no more college volleyball like there's nothing else after that besides Olympics um but right now I'm in the middle so it's like I've been here two years I'm about to have two more years left um I'm excited I keep looking forward like there's always something to look forward to while you're college volleyball like something can always happen you can have a 6 a.m cancel you can have an extra game on your schedule I mean it keeps you guessing so you have to put in the hard work and the dedication if you really want to see your results and stuff like that. And I know like our spring season got sh uh, cut short because of COVID-19, but um, I mean, you could see my team was improving during our spring season. And so I'm actually kind of excited going back into the season to see how much and see how far we've actually grown as individuals. So college volleyball, I know high school volleyball is in the fall. Y'all got a fall season and a spring season in college? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. <laughs> so it's more like um, spring season is more like the tournaments. So um, like we'll go to like limestone and play them for like a set time or we'll go to um, uh, what's another school? Like we'll go to Belmont Abbey and play them or something like that for a set time. Uh, but fall, fall series, springs just like, I want to say springs more like um, like just tournaments and stuff like that. For sure, I didn't know that. That's you learn something every day. Now our viewers gave some jewels to our to our viewers. Um, 
One last thing, Taylor. Any um, lasting advice to anyone, any student athletes out there? Um, I'd say you need to make your brand while you can. Go ahead and make your brand. Establish who you want to be as a person. Establish what you want to do as a person. And you also want to know your worth. Don't let anybody, like, undermine you. And you're going to have doors of opportunities. And so, like, don't take what you have for granted. For sure. Taylor, I appreciate you. Thanks for coming on. Any, any last words or anything? No, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, you take care, Taylor. Thanks for doing this. Good luck this upcoming season. Stay safe and tell your mom, your dad, Jalen, and, and your sister I say hey. I will. All right, see you later, Taylor. Bye. Bye.